The assignment still gives me sweaty palms. Mrs. McCullough, seventh grade English teacher, made our class write an entire five-page essay without any form of the verb to be. That's right. No is, are, was, were, will be, shall be, can be, could be, will be, would be, has be, has been, have been, in any form could appear in that paper. Actually, she shouldn't have to bear the total blame. The entire English teaching staff came up with that excruciating project. Even after we finished that unit on strong verbs, Ms. McCullough kept, continue, kept counting off for wimpy verbs, as she called them, for the rest of the year. But she did make an impression and create a writer. To this day, I have to think twice, sometimes three times, before I leave unedited a sentence with an is or an are. Such a sentence just doesn't look strong enough to make it alone in this world of cynicism, sarcasm, and strong logic. To be verbs often follow empty, meaningless openings like there, there is, there are. Readers have to back into the real point of the sentence. Note the difference between these passages. There are many reasons managers fail in our company. You see how that backs into the point? Much stronger to say managers fail for many reasons in our company. Or take this sentence. Susan is the kind of person who demands accuracy. That's weak. It takes two clauses to say the same thing. But listen to this version. Susan demands accuracy. Strong, straightforward. Think about the verb choices sports writers use. Williams rounds first base, dashes towards second, and slides into third base. Safe, the crowd roars. Pete Jones jockeys up to batter's, the batter's box, ready to show us what he can do. He slams it into left field. The fans scream for Williams to run home. The left fielder lunges for it, catches it on the bounce, and hurls it toward the plate. You get the picture. Vivid verbs speed up the action. They make the scene come alive. Granted, you may not be announcing a sporting event, or writing a gripping novel, but neither do you want to put your readers to sleep with your status report or your feasibility study. Want to revolutionize your business writing or technical writing in one easy step? Make Ms. McCullough proud. Replace those to-be verbs with stronger versions.